Welcome to E News Bulletin of IPR Department. I'm Chiring Eden. Let's look at the top 10 news making headlines this week. In the state staff's force meeting held on Tuesday for Health and Family Welfare Department, chaired by the Honorable Chief Minister, it was decided that testing for COVID-19 would now be charged at prescribed rate of Rs 3,500 for RT-PCR and Rs 2,000 for true NAT testing for all non-Sikkimese returning to the state. Returnees would be consolidated in the same hotel instead of being quarantined in different hotels. Next hotel for quarantine would be used only once the current one reaches its maximum capacity, keeping in view the better use of resources. Quarantine period of 21 days has been made mandatory for all returnees. This includes the initial quarantine at facility and returnees will be released only on completion of the test. As per the latest health bulletin issued by the health department on Thursday, 12 new positive cases have been reported in the state. All the 12 cases are army personnel who were the primary contacts of the 89th patient who was also an army personnel. He had tested positive for COVID-19 on the night of June 30th. With the new cases, the total number of COVID-19 positive cases in the state now stands at 101 and the total number of active cases is 35. It was reported that out of 19 primary contacts of the 89th patient, 12 tested positive. Contact tracing of all secondary contacts is in process. All the 13 positive persons along with the remaining 6 primary contacts have been shifted to the Army Hospital Bagdogra, which is the dedicated hospital for COVID-19 for Army personnel. Out of 101, total number of cases recovered and discharged stands at 53. On Thursday, an inspection of the ongoing construction of 2 km fair weather road of Galzing 8th mile to Omchung School was done by the PWD Minister Samdup Lecture, along with MP Lok Sabha Indra Hang Subba and Minister Kam Emily Galzing Barmek Loknath Sharma. Minister Loknath Sharma, seeing the plight of the people of Omchung area, urged the PWD Minister to visit the area where the proposed fair weather road had caused damages which needed to be inspected and resolved at the earliest. PWD Minister during his visit expressed that the road conditions of Omchung needs to be properly reassessed and further the department would inquire about people in connection to the project of the two kilometers long road connecting 8th mile Gelsing to Omchung school which is in a very bad condition and could be an agent of catastrophic disaster during the monsoon seasons. The grievances of the public of Omchung were heard and the ministers and the MP gave their assurances to them that the matter would be resolved soon. A press conference on the e-governance initiatives taken by the Transport Department was held at the conference hall of Yatayat Bhavan Gang Talk on Thursday. The conference was addressed by Secretary Transport Department Raju Bastath, wherein he apprised in detail about the various e-governance initiatives implemented by Motor Vehicles Division and Sikkim Nationalized Transport under Transport Department Government of Sikkim in collaboration with National Informatics Center Government of India. Mr. Basnath further informed that the general public has availed for e-governance facilities fairly well as of now and in the month of June 2020, out of the 1.78 crores of tax collected, 81.67 lakhs was collected through the online portal. He also apprised the gathering that there is an increase in accountability, efficiency and transparency and the revenue collected will positively impact the economic growth of the state that has been severely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Secretary requested the general public to make utmost use of the e-governance facilities and hoped that this measure will positively benefit the people of Sikkim. The district hospital Gelsing is now well equipped with the much-awaited medical facilities for kidney dialysis. On Thursday, Minister for Health and Family Welfare Dr. M.K. Sharma officially inaugurated the newly established dialysis unit in special presence of Deputy Speaker Sangi Lepcha, Ministers Loknath Sharma Samdup Lepcha, Bhim Hang Limbu, Sanjit Karel, MP Lok Sabha Indrahang Subba, Chairman of SBS and other dignitaries and officials of West District Administration. The newly established dialysis unit within the district hospital Gelsing is comprised of five bedded units along with separate cabins for doctors, nurses, isolation room, dialyzer washing room, changing room, oxygen plant and reverse osmosis plant. 
After the inauguration, a meeting was held at the conference hall of district hospital Gelsing. Health Minister Dr. M.K. Sharma and Minister Loknath Sharma expressed their happiness and congratulated the entire medical team of West District. Viewing the increasing number of patients of kidney dialysis, the state government has initiated the genuinely required medical facility and upgradation of basic medical services. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Leh early this morning to review the situation in Ladakh after the June 15 clash in which 20 soldiers were killed in line of duty in a face-off with Chinese troops. PM Modi is presently at one of the forward locations in Nimu, his office said in a statement. He reached there early in the morning and he is interacting with personnel of the Army, Air Force and Indo-Tibetan Border Police. Located at 1100 feet, this is among the tough terrains surrounded by the Zanskar Range and on the banks of the Indus. The Prime Minister is likely to meet the soldiers injured in the June 15th clash at Galwan Valley. The scheduled visit was a closely guarded secret with the entire security paraphernalia on high alert. He is accompanied by Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat. The Drug Controller General of India has approved pharmaceutical firm Zydus Cadilla to start Phase 1 and Phase 2 human clinical trials of its COVID-19 vaccine. This is the second vaccine after Hyderabad-based Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine to get the approval. Drug manufacturers around the world are racing to develop a vaccine against the novel coronavirus. India, a leading manufacturer of vaccines and general medicines, is expected to play a key role in this race, with several institutes working on different drugs. There are at least 17 vaccines being tested on humans across the world currently. ICMR expects to launch Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine by August 15 after completion of clinical trials. Saroj Khan, one of India's most promising choreographers, has died at the age of 71. Khan had an illustrious career that stretched for decades and choreographed some of Bollywood's most iconic and popular songs. Her career took off in the late 1980s when she worked on a slew of hit numbers. She died of cardiac arrest in hospital in Mumbai city. According to Indian media reports, she was admitted to hospital last month after she complained of breathlessness. She tested negative for COVID-19. Indian Home Ministry has asked the Central Armed Police Force, also known as the Paramilitary Forces, regarding the recruitment of transgender as assistant commandants. The ministry is planning to commission transgenders as officers in Central Reserve Police Force, Border Security Force, Central Industrial Security Force, Indo-Tibetan Border Police and the Sashastra Seema Bal. Sources in the security establishment said that with the central government notifying the Transgender Persons Act in December last year, it is now essential to provide transgenders with a level playing field in all avenues and services, including combat policing. India reports 379 deaths and highest single-day spike of 20,903 new cases in the last 24 hours. Fresh cases breached the 19,000 mark once again, with 19,148 patients testing positive for the virus, taking India's case load to 6 lakhs 400 plus. India's cumulative death toll has risen to 17,834. On the positive side, 3 lakhs 59,000 plus people have recovered from the virus. That is all we have for today. Please like and follow our Facebook page, that is Government of Sikkim official page, for the most authentic news and information on recent developments in the government and the state. Thank you for watching.